Over the many episodes made on the lore of Cyberpunk, we have explored some of the most powerful and legendary netrunners who have graced Night City and have changed the whole of the world most of the time for the worst. Raish Bartmos with his deadly rogue AIs used to shut down what was the old net, Alt Cunningham creating the foundation for the Soul Killer program, and Spider Murphy rate Bartmos's protege and extremely close friend. However, deep within the NUSA within the department known as the Federal Intelligence Agency, there is one netrunner who has become more Borg than human, sacrificing everything that made her human to become essentially a super weapon to be used to the president's heart's desires. This netrunner would be codenamed known as Songbird and to this day is one of the most deadly people roaming the earth. But life wasn't easy for Songbird and still to this day is going through many hardships. But how did it get to this stage and why do I say that she is one of the most dangerous people roaming the earth? How did she become a member of the FIA and what is her fate now within the year of 2077? Well, in today's episode, we will be exploring the tragic backstory of Songbird, also known as Somi, and what she's been doing for the NUSA over the many years. This is the story behind the deadly netrunner of the NUSA. This is the tragic tale of Somi, aka Songbird. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Exter, a premium accessories brand that creates incredible quality smart wallets that are super slim to provide you with a nice convenient card holder that is quick and easy to use. These wallets are great as they take up to next to no room in your pocket. They are essentially the same size as your phone, so you won't feel weighed down by a hefty traditional wallet. At just one click of a button, all of your cards are instantly at your fingertips, ready to be used. And best of all, it is all made out of sustainable, environmentally friendly materials, making even more beneficial to move away from the standard wallets. Design-wise, you have a wide variety of color and material options, such as the sleek carbon fiber minimalist black look, the space gray aluminum holder, or if you are a more traditionist like me and like a leather look, you can get my favorite, the Parliament wallet, which keeps you looking classy, but also has extra pockets for additional cards or places to store any notes you might have. Along with the tracker card, you can make sure that your bank and important cards are safe and can be tracked wherever you go, so you will never have to worry again about if you've lost your wallet, as with one check of the app, you'll be able to locate it thanks to its worldwide lost and found network. So why not treat yourself or your partner this Valentine's Day with a new sleek smart wallet that helps you keep your cards nice and tidy and without standing out massively in your pocket. And with my code WISEFISH, you can get 25% off your purchases. So grab yourself one of these amazing wallets and cut down on the clutter. It will not only be well worth it for you, as I personally love mine, but it also really helps this channel out. So that's code WISEFISH for 20 25% off your purchases. So thank you Exeter for sponsoring this video and with all of that said, let's get back to the story of Songbird. Song Somi was born and raised within New York City on the 29th of December 2045. At that point in time, America was in shambles. The Time of the Red was still in full effect within Night City with big rebuilding projects going on, but for everyone else, they were still struggling to handle the recent net attacks launched by Raish Bartmos in 2022 to wipe out the old net just before he was taken out by the corporations looking to shut down the activists who liked to hack and cause trouble just for the fun of it. Whilst all hell was going on around the country, Somi would be raised by her mother, and it would seem that it would only be her mother, as within none of her favourite family photos, a father is never present within them. Maybe she did grow up with one, but I think it's safe to say that that relationship wasn't as strong as the one she had with her mother. By the age of 13, still living within New York City, Somi got a taste for net running, similar in style to how Raish Bartmos got into it all, and whilst out and about convinced a local ripper doc to sell her an old worn out cyber deck so that she could really dive into the new net any chance she could get. After a few years, Somi became an extremely competent net runner and because of her skills was able to move out from her family home in New York City and moved into her own apartment within Brooklyn. Within this apartment she would fully kit it out with a ton of net running gear to allow her to dive in whenever she needed and without limitations as well. Essentially with this gear she was able to go to any place within the net to steal data from Dataform 
fortresses and also just venture into out of the way places to satisfy her curiosity. This helped Somi gain a reputation as an extremely skilled netrunner, as her friends would certainly notice, along with her boyfriend of the time named Lucas. But as her netrunning skills developed over the years, she would also go on to take extremely risky gigs that were listed sometimes from back alley fixes, which would help her improve her skills but were most of the time extremely unsuccessful. That's not to say she never completed any, those that she did complete helped her to pay for more equipment and more luxuries for her new thriving home. One of those successful gigs would be hacking into the Biotechnica Corporation around 2063 or 2064, breaching the Oregon fermentation facility to see what the corporation was truly up to there. By the age of 19, however, Somi's hacking had caught the attention of the Federal Intelligence Agency as she had, to some stupidly, hacked into her NUSA-owned Militech data fort using Militech's own military base in Turkey as a proxy, making it easy for them to track the true origins of the source. Netwatch were quickly on her case and almost got her, but luckily Somi was able to escape their grasp and for the time being was still a free individual. But Militech and the NUSA didn't stop in their search for this netrunner, tracking her signal at the last second with the original plan of being flatlining her. The plan was quickly changed as Solomon Reed, a vital operative within the FIA, spoke out against killing her, realizing her skills could be used for their organization, and with that being agreed, Reed went on to go and meet with her in person to make this proposal, knowing full well that Somi didn't really have much of a choice in this instance. Knowing exactly where Somi lived, Reed traveled to her apartment within New York City and offered her this new opportunity. Initially, Somi refused Reed's offer, stating she did not want to work for the organization as she didn't believe in signing her life away. But Reed quickly reminded her that if she were to turn this opportunity down, Netwatch would not only go on an endless search to find her and take her out, but they would also search for everyone she cared about and take them out as well. Realizing there was no way out of this situation, Somi reluctantly accepted the FIA's offer, believing that Reed was the only way out of the situation. After that blackmail, Somi left everything behind, including her friends, family, and Brooklyn apartment, and now was embarking on a new life as a net running operative for the FIA. When leaving the city, however, Somi remembers not looking sad that she was leaving, but refused to look back at her home, whilst also saying she truly believed that Reed had saved her life. But for Reed, he knew that Somi did not believe that at all, and deep down, she was majorly affected by all of this. On their way back to the capital of the NUSA, Somi would officially meet with President Rosalind Myers and would swear an oath to her and her country, making her now an official FIA agent and time to Myers for as long as they needed her. With her now working for the NUSA, Somi was given a code name which was Songbird and was immediately assigned to Solomon Reed as his protege and trainee, as he was the one who wanted to bring her in in their organization in the first place. But sadly, outside of the FIA, Somi was officially labeled as deceased, with her gravestone being placed at Calvary in New York City. For her family and friends, they would never get to see her ever again. To many, they probably saw this kind coming due to her being a risky netrunner and probably believed that Netwatch had finally caught up to her and taken her out the unfortunate price to pay for the line of work she had been in. Little did they know whilst visiting her fake grave that Somi, now Songbird, was running her first mission out within Colombia alongside her trainer Reed and fellow FIA operative Alina Zenakis, also known as Alex. This whole operation was to shut down an arms trader named Luis Hernandez, working with the Colombian government who was stealing and smuggling Vital Corp tech. This op was completely off the record due to it being overseas and all of them used stolen identities to hide their tracks, utilizing Alex's skills of being a BD actress as she would become Hernandez's engineer within his entourage. Somi was the one who pieced together all of Hernandez's dossier, helping the whole operation go ahead. However, during this she had missed one vital detail that was massively significant in their whole success. The engineer, who Alex was impersonating at this point in time, had a horrific fear of dogs getting extremely sweaty, shaking all over, and a lot of time even wetting themselves due to how scared they were of them. Alex, however, did not know any of this, and when entering Hernandez's place, would get sniffed by one of his bikini models' Doberman. Unaware that the engineer would have been out of there in a shot, Alex bent down to it, stroked it, and said, who's a good boy? Getting up, she would then head over to Hernandez's table, but then it was obvious to all, this was not his loyal 
engineer, but someone impersonating him. And suddenly, Alex had two barrels to her head and one in her back. Realizing there was no way out of this situation, Reed and the rest of his secret FIA operatives gave up any hope of doing a mission of subterfuge and instead kicked the door down and wiped out all of Hernandez's crew, making an official report that a rival gang had taken them all out, luckily allowing them to get away quickly without turning it into an international problem. For Songbird, this was a major blunder on her first gig and could even be seen to some as her doing it intentionally to wipe out the FIA agents looking after her. But regardless, all of them got out of it alive and Songbird, Reed and Alex returned back to the NUSA with the mission complete, even if it was seen as a dramatic failure. Despite that one issue with the dossier, President Myers still saw it fit to reward Songbird with a badge of honor as a reward, clearly believing that the only thing that was important in this instance was that Hernandez was taken taken out once and for all, and the smuggling of important tech out in Colombia had now come to an end. Reed forgave Songbird, believing it to be a first-time rookie error, but for Alex that memory always sat with her, believing things should always be double-checked every time they went on a future mission, especially if it involved Songbird. Now with her medal, Song gave it to a homeless man she passed on her way back from work who would pin it to his jacket when asking people for spare change, hoping they'd see him as a war hero and would pity him more than before. Before. With that first operation out of the way, Reed and Alex both allowed Somi to go and visit her grave out within New York City, where they would lay some flowers down and pour some whiskey over it, enabling Somi to say a final goodbye to the life she once had and to some extent, her freedom. With that done, it was back to working for President Myers as she became her new most loyal servant, going into the most vital era of her presidency. As the 2060s were coming to an end, President Rosalind Myers had one ambition in mind, and that was to unite the whole of the United States together once again, bringing back those independent states that had broken off for their own ambitions. With everyone back under one government, Myers believed she could bring back the glory days of America, becoming a major superpower like they were after World War II. With this goal, Myers started attacking all of the states that opposed her and officially started the Unification War, carpet bombing a selection of the major cities around the country and looked to take Nike City for herself, sending in a large group of Militech operatives, led by Colonel Kurt Hansen, who hoped to plant that precious NUSA flag down on Night City soil himself. At this same time, Reed, Songbird and other vital FIA agents were sent on their own undercover missions to Night City as well, working alongside Kurt Hansen in his Battle of Pacifica. Being relocated here, Songbird was given her own apartment close to the Tranquil Terrace within Serenade the sands. The truth was that this whole area was technically still Militech owned, as underneath this part of Pacifica lay a huge Militech lab named Sinoshore that had been created back in 2020, causing all of the corporations looking to pump money into the area to leave, with Militech claiming it was due to gas leaks and other dangerous things located underground. That said, however, for the time being, this whole lab was abandoned by Militech for unknown reasons, but its projects were still down there in its databases. So something that most likely Myers knew about and was exactly why Songbird was sent to this area specifically. Whilst living there, Songbird often spent her time on one of the terraces looking out all over the city and its people, remembering the good times she had when she lived back in her similar apartment in her old home in Brooklyn. Night City was certainly special and a lot of memories were triggered for Somi when first arriving. As the war got closer to its end, with the NUSA looking to take their ultimate victory, Songbird and Reed were sent on their last mission to take out or neutralize Marutu Azuru, an admiral of the Arasaka Corporation who had come to the aid of Night City and were pledging support to all of the remaining free states in their war against the brutal NUSA. As the two traveled through Night City making plans for how they go about doing this operation, the two would go on to receive word from Myers to pull out of Night City and forget about the targets. They were to return to the NUSA immediately, most likely due to the fact that Myers had signed the Arvin Accord, bringing the unification war to an official end thanks to Arasaka's appearance. As the two met up in Tom's diner to discuss how they left the city, after losing multiple FIA agents in the process to Arasaka forces, both Songbird and Reed would learn that Azuru and his whole family
family were killed within an AV sabotage. Both of them questioned what happened, knowing full well that they hadn't set this up. Despite that new hiccup, Reed went on a new mission before exiting Night City for good, and that was saving the last remaining FIA agent that was remaining in the city known as Jonas Collinson. Songbird massively disagreed with this, knowing full well that Jonas would not return the favor if it were Reed in that same position. But despite Songbird's pleas, Reed went anyway. That said, Songbird did claim that if he needed anything, he should immediately contact her before she left the city as well, stating on top of that, honor does not exist in Night City, with Reed acknowledging this, saying that she was probably right. Eventually, Reed reached Jonas and helped him evacuate, but at the cost of Solomon losing his own plan of leaving the city. Now he had to come up with a new plan to get out himself. With that, Reed tried to contact Songbird quickly after his personal mission. Eventually, Songbird gathered his coordinates and came up with a new plan of getting him out safely of the city without Arasaka finding him. Here she would guide him to a high vantage point where Reed could jump onto a maglev train that would be heading towards Southern California. And with that plan in action, Reed having worked closely with Somi for many years, trusted her every word and followed it to the letter. Jumping successfully onto the train, Reed entered it and finally relaxed asking Songbird about what her own plans for leaving the city were. But Songbird just responded that the NUSA government was already signing the end of the war. Reed knew that Songbird was now President Myers' new favorite and she had been given the main priority to get out of the city and stated that she deserved the easy way out of the city as after all, she had saved his life. But not long after this conversation, Reed went on to notice a fellow passenger was carrying a firearm on them. But with that, Songbird did not reply. Reed knew he was in for trouble and attempted to leave the train. But as he did, speaking to Somi at all times, he noticed the train door was being sealed shut. At this moment, Reed knew that Songbird Songbird had betrayed him and he was being left to die, being taken out by a couple of hired goons and Arasaka mercs. For Songbird, however, she cut off all communications with Reed and headed back to Myers, where she would indeed be her new favorite and also Myers' new project as well. As the 2070s were now in full swing and the Unification War had come to an official end, Songbird continued her work with President Myers, organizing and taking part in net running operations for the NUSA. But Myers had new plans for Songbird, utilizing her net running skills to their maximum. For years, many had wanted to dive into the old net, but were unsuccessful due to the black wall being put in place by Netwatch after the deadly AI attacks by Raish Bartmos in 2022. Behind this wall was still a lot of mystery, but what was known was that within it was a lot of deadly life-ending rogue AIs that would be world-ending if they were to get loose, or worse, weaponized by a mega corporation, or God forbid, a whole nation. President Myers saw this as a great opportunity and frequently sent in Songbird to attempt at breaching the Black Wall and maybe weaponize it in their endless fight against their main enemy of Arasaka, who had already developed their deadly super weapon that many would know as being the soul killer. Diving into the black wall was not an easy or nice task and completely destroyed Somi physically and mentally with no real success to be shown for it, initially anyway. Seeing no real change happening within these missions, Myers forced Songbird into upgrading her cyber gear, turning her from a standard net runner into what was essentially half human half mech, or a Borg if you will. With her whole spine being filled with Militech chrome, her skin being top grade synth skin, and bridge yellow wires that snake up her arms and spine, making her look extremely unique, but also somewhat terrifying to anyone who had a fear of cyberpsychosis, or anyone who was majorly chromed up. Making these changes certainly helped her on her goal as she became arguably the most powerful netrunner that had ever existed, being able to utilize certain aspects of the Black Wall and harvest it for the NUSA's goals, as well as her own. However, on the 22nd of December 2076, Netwatch detected an attempt at breaching the Black Wall, knowing that there were individuals out there looking to use it for their own good, making them up their operations. That said, luckily they did not figure out that it was Songbird once again, and for the second time, she was safe from their grasp. 
The year was now 2077 and for Somi she had now officially lost all of what made her her in the first place as she had lost all of her autonomy and personality. The FIA were telling her what to do, think and behave like and there was no way out of it. She had pledged loyalty to them until the very end. On top of that, she had lost everyone who truly cared for her. The one individual looking out for her over the years, Solomon Reed, she had betrayed. Alex had also disappeared completely and was not with the FIA anymore and for President Meyer was she valued Songbird, she only really saw her as a vital, expensive asset that was essentially, now that she had breached the Black Walls successfully, an extremely dangerous weapon who could be used to break international laws governing cyberspace use. As time went on, the rogue AIs that were on the other side of the Black Walls started infiltrating Somi's mind and she was slowly but surely going insane, losing herself completely, and if this was to continue, would turn into the most deadly case of cyberpsychosis ever seen before and not only would she die, but the rogue AIs would be free from their slumber. With her mind still intact to some extent, Somi knew she had to act now or it would be the end of her and behind the backs of everyone, conducted a new plan to save herself once and for all. Knowing full well that underneath the place she once lived in Night City, there was the Militech base of Sinoshore, which inhabited a piece of AI equipment known as the Neural Matrix, this would be the very thing she needed to cure herself of all of her symptoms, and with it, she could finally have her life and freedom back and escape Rosalind Myers' rule. But unfortunately, Kurt Hansen, the once loyal Militech colonel, had now taken the whole of this area above the labs as well as the labs themselves, broken free of the NUSA rule and put it under his rule of a lawless land now known as Dogtown. And with that rule had also taken all of the Militech equipment located there such as basilisk tanks, submarines and weaponry to sell on the international black market. And with that also had the neural matrix in his hands as well to sell for a hefty price. Somi knew that Kurt was the man she needed to speak to if she were to save her own life and after secretly meeting with him came up with a deal that she would hand over President Rosalind Myers in exchange for that said neural matrix. This came to a head in the summer of that year where President Myers, Songbird and nine more crew members traveled over the Californian coast on Space Force One. During their travel, Songbird contacted the legendary Merc known as V to help them out as Songbird claimed their communications had been jammed and the spacecraft was being hacked. V was the only one who could be contacted thanks to their relic in their head in which Songbird utilized part of the black wall to open communications and also prove to V that she was serious and could be the help that they needed as well to overcome their inevitable fatality. As V followed Songbird's signal going to witness Space Force 1 flying over Night City airspace, the vehicle would go on to be shot down by Kurt Hansen, which was not at all planned by Songbird at all. Kurt himself had betrayed her, knowing full well that she was the only person that could work with the Blackwall AI inside of the Neural Matrix. With the vehicle going down, Songbird got Myers into the space plane's safe room and got herself into the emergency life pod which would go over the EBM Petrochem Stadium and fall into the eastern side of Dogtown, whilst Myers and the Space Force One crashed into the western side. In the end, however, Hansen would not be able to capture Myers but would certainly look to try and destroy her, but would in fact capture Songbird instead, as mentioned earlier, so that he could get her to work with the Neural Matrix's AI and suddenly V, enlisted by Myers, with the help of Songbird's once loyal trainer Reed, would go on a mission to seek out where Songbird was being held and get her back from the traitorous colonel in charge of Dogtown. Eventually, V would find out what Song was there to find in the first place and how she had and still was double-crossing Hansen to get what he held. But with all of this information, V would have to consider the options wisely. Siding with Reed would mean they would keep their word to Myers and would save Songbird and would make Reed feel better about his past action in his life but siding with the NUSA would mean betraying Songbird completely, going against her wishes of being free once and for all, and would send her immediately back into the NUSA's grasp. Not only that, but would mean V would have to venture down into the hidden depths of Sinoshore to find a now cyber-psychotic Songbird who had fully been taken over by the rogue AIs infiltrating her mind. It would be a nightmare situation, one that would show off the true terrifying nature of what these AIs could do if unleashed into the populace. Doing 
this and portraying Songbird would ultimately mean V fulfilled their contract with the NUSA and in return would be saved from the relics slowly killing them, but it would come at the cost of Somi's freedom and ultimately her life as well. But if V were to side with Songbird and help her break free from Myers' control, the two would have to go on a stealth mission throughout the whole of the NCX spaceport, fighting off not only orbital air security forces, but Myers and Reed's special ops who were specifically sent to take out Songbird and V, who they now saw as a traitor to the nation. During this battle to the spaceport to try and get Songbird safely to the lunar colony of Taicho, thanks to tickets from someone she was unwilling to name, but said they had distinct blue eyes, V would once again go on to witness the brutality of what the Black Wall could do if it were to be weaponized by a Netrunner or just powerful cyberware, as Songbird would link together with V and give them the power of the Black Wall, vaporizing the NUSA troopers sent to kill both of them, melting their skulls by sending rogue AIs into their brain, something no one should ever have to experience. But if these two were to go all the way, V would still have to decide whether Songbird truly gets her freedom at the expense of V's treatment, but also her trainer, Solomon Reed's life as well. Or the other choice would be to once again send her back to the NUSA to be subjected to more tests and most likely sent back into the Black Wall to capture more rogue AIs for President Myers' super weapon projects. In the end, it's clear to see that Somi is one of the most powerful Netrunners America has ever seen, but it has come at a big cost. Not only has she lost all of her positivity and her own personality, she has been morphed into something she is not. She essentially is more Borg than human, being abused by President Myers and turned into a brutal super weapon that can, if she wants, dive into the Black Wall, steal its devastating power and use it to cause utter destruction everywhere she goes. And with the state she is in within 2077, if left to her own device, Devices, she is essentially a ticking time bomb, one that will wipe out not only Night City from underneath, but all of the NUSA, all because of President Myers' obsession for power and dominance over the land. But is Songbird really a bad person? I mean, after all of the years, she has betrayed multiple people, including Solomon Reed, Myers, Kurt Hansen, and V, all to get what she wants, that being her life back. Well, honestly, that would ultimately be down to if you empathize with her, or if you see that it was her choice in the first place, and your survival is more important than what she wants. But regardless of your choices, it's safe to say that Somi's life has not been easy, and to this date has been one of endless regrets and poor decisions. Where her story will go in the future, only time will really tell. But for now, this has been the story behind the NUSA's most deadly cyber weapon. This has been the tragic tale of the netrunner known as Somi, aka Songbird. I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video and checking out the channel. I also want to give a huge shout out to my supporters on YouTube, Patreon, who help me keep afloat and make these videos on a regular basis, including my small fishes, my big fishes, Greg, my YouTube channel wise one, Sith Lord 906, Video Gamer 75, Ico the Wolf and Havoc, my sharks, Alfred Correa, Jason X117, and Wow Such Gaming, and my Megalodons, Sinus, Hazy Thoughts, and Bad Clams 83. But that is all for now. Thank you for watching again. If you want to support this channel, all the the links are down including the links to the audio versions on spotify and apple music and if you did enjoy this please do like comment and subscribe to help get them out there and finally with all that said i shall see you all in the next one cheers Found out, treasures are always lost, pleasures and riches.